grace to you, mercy and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. From this morning's gospel reading from Matthew chapter 9, and Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And then from this morning's epistle reading from Romans 5, but God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So far, the word of the Lord. The need for love and compassion is both universal and timeless. Its presence is uplifting while its absence is truly missed. As the ancient father Justin writes, love is like the air we breathe. It isn't always seen, but it is heard, felt, and needed. As we hear Matthew use the word compassion to, to describe Jesus' observation upon seeing the crowds, we're reminded of the scriptures in this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Compassion flows out of love. It assumes a heart for those in need. In today's gospel, it's Jesus' love and compassion that moved him to multiply his ministry by sending his disciples out to proclaim the kingdom of heaven is at hand and to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. It was with a lens of compassion that Jesus sees a hungry multitude gathered in the wilderness and miraculously feeds them, gathering leftovers at the end. It was out of compassion that Jesus healed the blind, the lame, the deaf, and the demon-possessed, giving them their lives back. It was his compassion on full display as he suffered immensely upon the cross, but took the time to ensure, entrust his grieving mother to his trusted disciple. The essence of the Lord is bound and held together in his love, selfless, serving, sacrificial love. God is love. That is his essence. And in Jesus Christ, God shows his love. Once again, from our epistle reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, for while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one might even dare to die. But God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Then, since therefore we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were still sinners, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more, now that we have been reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. And more than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. As we saw earlier in the life and work of Jesus, we see God's love in flesh and blood. Paul tells us that what Jesus does for us on the cross comes from his desire for our salvation. He doesn't act on our behalf because we're good. He doesn't die for us because we're perfect. He doesn't love us because we're special. For if we were so good, so perfect, so special before God's justice, Jesus would have never had to die to justify us, taking our place before God's judgment seat. But he did, not because we're good or special or perfect, but because we're not. While we were still weak, Paul points out, Christ died for the ungodly. 
God doesn't wait for us to get our act together. He doesn't accept people because of what they do or what they don't do. He doesn't embrace our behavior or social standing or our achievements. No, Paul is quite specific. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ coming for our salvation was all God's idea. It wasn't prompted by us, but it flows from God's desire for us. His compassion and mercy flow from his essence of being true love. Salvation is for us, not from us, not by us. His mercy is granted not because of us, but because of Jesus. Thus we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. In Jesus we see the eternal nature of God, of which David spoke hundreds of years earlier in Psalm 100, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. God shows his love for us and for all in Jesus. We're not loved because we're good. We're loved in spite of not being good. You see, God's love is unconditional. It doesn't depend on us or anything we say or anything we do. It arbitrarily flows from God to us. And while that may go well beyond our ability to understand or grasp, that's how God does things. Even as the rescued children of Israel gritched and complained about all they didn't have, God continued to love them. He reminded them in today's Old Testament reading that you yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. The long story of God and Israel follows a pattern of God blessing, the forgetfulness and sin of the people, disaster, the cry for help and repentance, and God coming to the rescue and repeat. This is the sort of what Paul is trying to get at in his letter to the Romans when he says, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, so death spread to all men because all have sinned, for sin was in the world even before the law was given. Death reigned from Adam to Moses. You see, even without the Ten Commandments, sin has always been a part of us, reigned in people. Death has always come to everyone. As David points out, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. And yet, Paul continues with these words, But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by that grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, which abounded for many. You see, in the face of our sin, God shows his love. In the face of our apathy, our lack of love for him, for others, God shows his love. In times of despair that move us to distrust the Lord, his motives, his working. God shows his love. When we have a hard time loving him, God shows his love. When we fail to show compassion toward our fellow man, to love others even as we have been loved by God, God still shows his love. Truly God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We have been justified by his blood. We have been saved by him from the wrath of God. So what is the, our response to this unearned, unmerited, undeserved, and unconditional love of God for us? We rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Paul says, through whom we have now received reconciliation. We live in gratitude for God's grace in our life, and we share the love that we have received with the people around us who do not know about God's love for them in Christ. And with eyes of compassion, just as Jesus looked upon the harassed and the helpless surrounding him, we see what's going on around us, and we try to love our way through it. 
as God's kingdom of priests and a holy nation, we take what we have received and we share it with the people around us in need. We do not turn away from those whom the world considers lesser or disadvantaged or even worthless. No, we take up the apostolic mantle as Christ-sent ones, proclaiming the gospel with our words and through our deeds. We proclaim to people the kingdom of God is at hand, and we live out his love that is given as we share our love with others. Just as God shows his love at the cross and through the people who live under its shadow by faith. Look, there are some messed up people out and about in the world. And though we may not be as messed up or as crazy, it still takes one to know one. It takes crazy to understand where crazy comes and crazy goes. It takes a sinner to know one. And that's me. And that's you. We are just as messed up, crazy, sinful as anyone else. But by God's grace, we are rescued from living out our moments and days in sin. We are saved from eternal death and destruction. We are delivered from hell, though that's where we deserve to go. In and of ourselves, we are no better than anyone else around us. But God shows his love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. The only difference between sinners and saints is God's love in Jesus Christ. We, who have been loved, now have the opportunity to love in Jesus' name. With compassion and mercy shown, we seek to make a difference in the lives of others. God shows his love for us in Jesus. May we show his love for others as we love and we care for those people in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Please rise and join us.